Our next speakers, uh, there are three of them. So Zoya, Adam, and Tanya. They will be talking about the metrics behind the Serbian startup ecosystems. Guys? Okay, hi uh, everyone. Let's just wait until um, we set everything up. Thank you. Not that I understood uh, most of the things that were spoken, but it seems like it was interesting for you at least. Okay. Um, so what we will just to here it is perfect. <laughs> okay. Um, just to give a, a short overview on what we will be talking about, and I'm really happy that we are here at HipCon because uh, tech community and startup community are very. Um, uh, tied up together and I think we should talk uh, even more um, with each other so in terms of um, this is not the first slide <laughs> no problem okay um, that's so everything one. thank you okay um, so what uh, but what, what is the basic picture so so far we've seen a lot of people talking about startups and we wanted to see is it really big? Is it, uh, especially in Serbia, you see that now uh, globally startups are becoming more and more relevant in terms of economic growth. So the governments are looking at them, the tech community is looking at that, but also international institutions, uh, big corporates. And we saw this trend in the last two years in Serbia as well. And I'm sure you witnessed it that we are listen hearing more about startups, but not hearing Mostly we hear the same names, the same founders, the same startups, and we, but we still hear that there is some growth. So what we wanted to see is, is our startup community really worth uh, talking about and where we are in this global marketplace? So first thing that we uh, got, and I, I hope some of you heard uh, about it, is the Startup Genome Report. So this is a U.S. San Francisco-based organization that is mapping uh, ecosystems all over the world. And um, of four, 54 ecosystems in the world, they also presented and represented in their uh, latest report, Belgrade and Novi Sad, which they recognized as one ecosystem. And as you can see, um, in the region, there's not uh, any other ecosystem that is presented. So at some point, this seems uh, relevant. And these are the data that we got from that public report, and uh, it's very... Um, short and not uh, very insightful if you want to understand the ecosystem deeper. So in that sense, uh, in Digital Serbia Initiative, we wanted to see uh, and understand this data better. Those data that Startup Genome created are very relevant because, as you know, startups are a global game. So it's making a product for a global market, usually at, uh, based on some kind of innovation. So. Uh, an entrepreneur in Belgrade is competing with the same challenges and on, as an entrepreneur in London or anywhere else in the world. So it's very relevant to see where we are comparing to the world. But also we need to understand uh, the data uh, way better. And this is the reason why we actually decided to use the startup genome data, but go a lot deeper, do our own research and actually see are our uh, startups hype or um, actually something that's relevant and that might be even more relevant for our economic development. We have the mic, perfect. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, so to start it off, basically, maybe a bit of a context. Uh, Tanya is working for PwC and I'm working for EY and together with uh, Zoe and Digital Serbia Initiative, we decided to work on this together. As Zoe mentioned, it's an important subject from the corporate world and all around, but this is for you maybe from our point of view, this is the equivalent of like Google and Microsoft working together on a similar project, so fierce competitors and whatnot. Um, so we started off basically as, uh, on a data-driven approach, uh, digging deep and understanding the drivers behind it. Uh, and of course, we want to be compared to see how we compare to the region and how, how that works. So we started out off with uh, basically uh, understanding where we are in, in light of, let's say, the, the top uh, performers from the ecosystems of Berlin and Amsterdam in terms of volume, uh, pure number of startups involved. Uh, we saw, and it's confirmed through the Startup uh, Genome Report, basically, that we are in line with our peers, uh, let's say uh, Budapest, uh, Bucharest, or Warsaw, and per capita, w we are closely there uh, 
with, with, with the peers. Uh, but then uh, we are also lagging uh, behind. We're in the, let's say, the first phase of the four phases that the Startup Genome Report is talking about. So there's still a lot of room to grow and progress, but we'll talk about it some more uh, as well. In terms of funding, everybody, I guess, is talking about uh, the money and how much uh, of it is going to startups. Uh, this is how uh, the public data shows us um, compared to region and the peers. Uh, but what we are trying to understand basically is this, well, hype or real. Um, and uh, we, we, if we compare ourselves to all of these countries on a per capita basis, because it makes more sense, we are one of the strongest here. Uh, but again, what needs to be uh, aligned in our mind is uh, that 125 million euros out of those around 100 goes to one uh, startup, one investment. Um, so in terms of funding, we are still not as strong uh, as the rest of them. And Tanya later will uh, go in depth on, on the funding as well. Um, comparing our, ourselves to, let's say, the ecosystems of the Startup Genome Report, we're still small. And as we mentioned, it's basically the first activation phase of our startup. Uh, again, what these numbers uh, should mean to you, yes, there's a big gap, but digging deep, uh, we also understand that their methodology isn't as uh, precise when uh, they are looking at us. So $303 million uh, of uh, startup value in Serbia means actually that it's only the startup that they can measure. Uh, us working through uh, the deal on trilateral, we know that this didn't go in because a lot of the startups in Serbia, basically, you cannot put a value on them because they didn't have funding rounds that you can put price tags and valuations on them as such. Uh, so we think the gap is a bit smaller, but still uh, it's pretty big to the startup genome uh, reference of the global ecosystems as such. Uh, Looking at local startups, so now coming back only to our ecosystem as such, uh, we can see that um, basically from driven by this market, and I'm sure you guys are all aware, there's not a lot of room to work with uh, here. So a lot of our startups are targeting the XU markets and the global markets, uh, as well as not focusing on the consumers, but on businesses, which it also makes sense if you're looking at things from, from the perspective of maybe it's easier to approach a business uh, than it is to approach a market of different consumers, different languages, and cultural barriers as such. And again, confirmed, uh, not a lot of startups uh, are, are, uh, have funding uh, outside, but they're sourced from their own funds, uh, friends, family, and such. And I think Tanya will give you a lot more detail on that as well. Also to mention, yeah, I forgot this slide. Um, <laughs> uh, we should be proud that a lot of the products that we are building are also used by the global companies. Um, but uh, this again shows that we are meant to target the global market as such and not maybe focus on, on only the, the regional one. Okay. So if we talk about funding, uh, I think that the Startup Genome Report shows us really that there is a lot of things that we can do uh, in that area and that that's one of the main obstacles maybe for the future growth of the, uh, of the ecosystem. Uh, why the, the funding is so, uh, so important is because of the fact that uh, we are currently nine times, uh, at nine times lower level than the average. And just as a reference, if we look at the total number of investments uh, that have happened in the last five years in Serbia and compare that number to the investment in startups, for example, in the UK last year, we, th that number in Serbia is 5,000 5, times lower. So you can imagine how big the gap regarding the funding is really. And if you look at the further data regarding the funding, what is uh, key is that only 30 startups per year uh, really get the check from the investors, so get the investment. Uh, this number is quite low, and uh, that's why we need to work hard on, on this one. Uh, we also have the, the data that if we look at the number of investors that are here in Serbia, we have only three of them. 
uh, and when you compare ourselves to the ecosystems that are in the early stages of, uh, of, of financing and funding, we are still behind uh, almost 10 times. And regarding the business angels, uh, this is something that is also really key for, for our startup ecosystem is to see more and more people uh, becoming startup angel, uh, business angels, sorry, and investing in startups. And this is something that Digital Serbia is currently uh, working on. So the good news is really that we are globally well connected. So when you look at our startups, and as Adam mentioned uh, just a, a minute ago, uh, our startups really create products that are used by huge multinational companies uh, abroad, and they are targeting the global market. So in those terms, we are above the average uh, when we compare ourselves to the ecosystems of a similar size and the ecosystems that are in the uh, early stage of development. Uh, this is probably one of the main reasons is that we have a large diaspora, uh, meaning that our people are working for these uh, big multinational companies abroad and that we have good connections with them. So they have the, uh, let's say, desire to connect our startups to these global markets. Uh, and I think that Serbian Entrepreneurs is one of the organizations that is really key uh, in this area. Yeah, so this is the topic that uh, Zoya and I uh, had uh, our first argument about, actually. Uh, like, for us, it was, for Zoya, it was uh, straightforward. Uh, she's part of the ecosystem for years, and for her, this local connectedness, meaning how much uh, the IT community is connected, how much the investors are connected to startups, uh, and how all these functions, for her, it was straightforward, and she said to me, we are really well connected, we know each other, we talk, we are constantly in contact, and that's how I see it. For me, coming from the other ecosystem here and having the external view, I told her that I think that our local connectedness is not really good and that we really need to uh, you know, like work on that. And she said to me, no way. Like, you are completely off, you know, like, and there was a huge argument about that. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, later on, when the Start of Genome uh, report came in, she called me and she said, uh, you know, like, it's hard for me to admit, but you were right. And that moment was one of those moments, you know, like, when you really don't want to be right. So when it comes to local connectedness, uh, which is highly important for the growth of the startups. So startups who are connected locally grow two times faster in terms of the revenue, and their exits are much larger at the end of the, uh, of the road, right? So in that sense, this local connectedness really means a lot. But if you look at the data that Startup Genome produced, we are way below the average. And uh, the good thing is that, you know, like, startup founders between each other, that index shows that there is, you know, like uh, certain connections that are established, that they help each other to a certain extent. But then if you dig deeper and you look at the other connections within the startup ecosystem, you know, like connections to the investors, connections to the experts, consultants, and the end of the day, you see that these uh, relationships are almost non-existent. And what was also, uh, for me, really striking is that what I saw is that early, uh, let's say, startup founders, those who have started their startups in 2008, 9, uh, they are really close. I mean, they talk to each other every single day. You know, like they pick up the phone and they talk to each other. However, as the startup ecosystem grew over the years, we see that, you know, like this new startup founders that are coming in the ecosystem are not well connected. So one of the situations I had is that the uh, startup uh, came to me, you know, like presented their product, pitched, uh, and uh, at the end of the conversation, when I asked them, do you know that, you know, like another startup in Belgrade is working on the same thing? It's just, you know, like a couple of steps ahead of you. They told me, actually, we didn't know that. So in that sense, I think that the whole ecosystem, and that's one of the reasons why we are here today, is that Everyone uh, in the tech, IT community, uh, on the other hand, in the, in, on the business side, 
uh, I would say we all have our role and our part to play uh, in the growth of our uh, startup ecosystem. Thank you, both Tanya and Adam. And this is, um, as I forgot to mention previously, but I got a bit confused at the beginning, is that basically this is just a sneak preview of the whole report that will be published in the next uh, one month. And we decided to share some of the data. They are not, if you're following the startup ecosystem, this should all be quite new for you because we haven't published them anywhere else. And this is the reason why we decided to actually talk about them here, but also the full report will have all the things that you've heard before, how much funding, uh, which, which subsectors are we strong at, and uh, things like that. But uh, let, if there is something that, um, the reason why we chose only these three things, apart from them being uh, not that uh, deeply talked about before is uh, also because they are quite important. It's good to know that we that our startups are really globally oriented, and that's an advantage. Also, if you're uh, Tanya mentioned the diaspora, but it's also we recognize that our market is small, and then we are immediately going to play global. And this is some of the of the disadvantage, for example, for Germany. Their startups are just uh, focused on Germany, and then they are too late to enter uh, the global game. And uh, so there is something that uh, uh, that's good with our economy being in that way. Also, if you want a really concrete answer of is this hype or is this reality, it's very difficult to say. But uh, maybe we can talk in terms of the region, uh, even our own region, or in terms of how is how big our startup ecosystem is comparing to the tech sector. And in that sense, we are above the average, uh, especially looking at our neighbors and even broader than that. So in that segment, it means that something relevant, globally relevant can be uh, found here. And last thing, and it's something that Tanya mentioned already, but it makes me um, very sad, is that obviously we don't help each other. And although if I w was convinced that I'm helping enough, it all means that if we all feel that we are helping others enough, or that we are asking for help enough, uh, then it's very important for us to know that it's not true. And then to start asking for help more and uh, help others more. And if somebody ever asks you what is the one thing that should be done in the ecosystem apart from individuals helping each other, it's funding. We need money in order to continue this potential. Uh, that's it. Uh, I'd like to thank Tanya and Adam for helping us with this report. And thank you all. Thank Hipcon for thank you uh, letting us present here. Thank you very much. We should all be working on local connectedness. You're right. Any questions for Zoya, Adam, or Tanya? Thank you.